Welcome to my world. This is Mark Chalero, the owner of MS Classic Cars, coming right back at you with another stunning piece. Today, I'm sitting in a magnificent 1933 Ford Vicky Custom that's been nicknamed Sly. This vehicle was a grade eight finalist for the Riddler Award. It's powered by a 572 V8 engine pushing 620 horsepower. Come on and check it out. So I'd like to start off this video here by saying it's non-rehearsed. Uh, there's a lot of information that I am going to forget during this presentation. So please visit our website at msclassiccars.com for a full description with tons of highly detailed photos. I will make mention if you have not or have been following MS Classic Cars, I only collect number one and number two condition vehicles. We've been doing that since inception. We're the only classic car dealership in the country who services everything we sell. We document that work with an invoice that's included in the binder that we provide for every vehicle. And then we detail these vehicles to the highest level possible. Once the vehicles are purchased by the new owners, I facilitate all the paperwork, make it very simple, and I even coordinate all of the enclosed shipping anywhere in the lower 48 United States. Once the vehicles go on the enclosed carrier, we wrap them with a brand new plastic cover to ensure the vehicle will arrive dust-free and look just like it does here in the showroom today. So just wanna make sure I made all of that very clear. Uh, I'm gonna start off uh, with this particular vehicle here by telling you the story uh, of what it is and how I acquired it and so forth. So I'm gonna read off of my notes that I have here. Uh, known as Sly, uh, this magnificent 1933 Ford Vicky two-door sedan custom was selected as a grade eight finalist for the Riddler Award. For anybody that doesn't know the Riddler Award, you have to Google it. It's every custom car builder's dream to qualify, even to go to the Detroit Autorama to be a contestant. Then what happens is all the vehicles show up, they all get displayed, and then the judges select uh, what they refer to as grade eight, which is the top eight finalists. That is a very, very big deal. And then of course they choose the Riddler Award winner for that particular year. These are some of the best cars in the world don't take my word for it. Take the fact that this vehicle was indeed a great eight Riddler finalist. It's a very big deal. Um, so again, it's loaded with tons of custom features throughout. It's powered by a fuel injected 572 uh, V8 engine that has 620 horsepower. This vehicle weighs less than 3000 pounds and it has over 600 horse. Major, major power major power. Uh, Bob and Jean Walridge of South Lyon 
Uh, Michigan had a vision to build one of the finest 33 Fords in the world and to compete for the prestigious Riddler Award. They teamed up with long-term friend Terry Wayne to lead the project with an open checkbook. The build took place over a six-year period and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars were invested to create this one-of-a-kind hot rod, again, named Sly. So, just want to touch base, uh, one more paragraph to read here. The build started in 2004 with a Downs body that was named 33 Ford laid back Victoria chopped three inches with these suicide doors. That's what Downs classified it as. A Downs chassis and some other items were ordered with the body, which totaled $41,525. We have the receipts to document that. Once everything arrived, it was sent to Red's Frame Shop in Howell, Michigan to get the body and framework started, which totaled $11,808.64. Understand that when you buy a body, you buy a chassis, you buy all the things that come along with it, People think sometimes it's just plug and play. It's actually the complete opposite. Uh, as an example, again, $11,800 was invested just getting everything to fit properly, do some fabrication work, et cetera. So we're already into the $52,000 price range and the project really hasn't even started yet. So with that being said, uh, it was then sent to Automotive Metal Shop in Kimball, Michigan for additional fabrication and metal work, which totaled $31,631.44. When they completed it, it then went to our creations in Howell, Michigan for body prep, paint, and final assembly work, which totaled $33,166.52. So a total of $118,000 $131.69 was invested just getting the frame, the body, the paint, and some of the trim completed. Well over an additional $100,000 was invested in completing this vehicle. It was truly a quarter of a million dollar project when it was all said and done in the year 2010. That was the year they took it uh, to Detroit Autorama uh, we have pictures of that on our website in the gallery section. You'll see it on display with lights and mirrors and everything else. It was absolutely epic, and it got chose for the great eight. Also in our photo gallery, you will see the award that was won and also a jacket that was provided. Uh, the gentlemen, uh, Bob Waldridge and Terry Wayne, uh, decided uh, that was extremely important to them to keep those. So those awards are pictured, but they're not included. Uh, just wanted to make sure I made reference of that. So please, again, check out our photo gallery. Um, with all the receipts and cost sheets that we have and so forth, uh, if you were to do the same exact build today, I have estimated that this vehicle would be somewhere around $300,000 to duplicate. The great thing about this vehicle is during its entire history, it was always garaged, it was kept in a climate controlled facility, and it was never driven. It was trailered to numerous shows. That leads me into uh, my binder here. Now you'll notice with this particular binder in the photo gallery, um, I have two of them. And I spent countless hours putting everything in methodical order that's included with plastic sleeves. But the one thing that I would like to mention here, getting back to my opening statement, uh, that every vehicle that we sell, we completely service. There was no way that I was going to acquire this vehicle as most dealers or individuals would, give it a quick spit shine and then throw it on the internet for sale. What we wanted to do at MS Classic Cars is we wanted to take something that was done to a very high level and we wanted to make it so somebody could actually drive it. This is definitely not your everyday driver uh, because the quality of it is so high uh, obviously nobody would want to drive this every day, but you absolutely can get in it. You can enjoy it. It runs excellent. It's super comfortable. It's got a lot of amenities. It is definitely the vehicle that you would be super proud of to take out. Uh, it again is very special. Getting into the actual invoice here, as it clearly documents, we invested $7,296.67 in this build. 
Uh, there is numerous receipts here. There's letters regarding uh, the Riddler deal. Uh, there's actually pictures on the internet of it, again here, that's showing everything from 2010 with its contestants that it was competing against. Uh, and then of course we go into the body, paint, mechanical, everything that I just went over with you. There's literally hundreds of receipts here. Even better than some of the receipts in this other binder, which I have here, it actually shows a lot of the bill process and you wonder where all that money was spent. Again, thousands of hours literally went into fabricating all of this so everything works. Again, it just goes on and on and on and on. It is truly uh, a spectacular deal. Even this dashboard that's in here uh, was all handmade and fabricated because you have to make it look as if it was done at the factory. So you kind of start with something and then you got to turn into something spectacular. Uh, anyway, just an outstanding build uh, again. So what I normally do in these videos is I talk about the exterior, interior, engine compartment and undercarriage from sitting inside the car. Uh, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to actually get out of the vehicle. I'm going to start with the exterior, kind of do a walk around presentation. When we make our way over to the driver's door, I'll open it back up, go over some of these interior features make our way around the back of it. There's some cool things I wanna show you. I'll leave it as a surprise. Make our way over to the passenger side, do the same thing. And then what I'm going to do is uh, show you the engine compartment, show you how beautifully uh, done everything was, including how nicely the hood opens. And I even am going to take off the engine side covers uh, so you can see the, the jewel inside that treasure box. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. We'll see you outside the vehicle. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a exterior presentation of this absolutely stunning 33 Vicky. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, this car being a grade eight Riddler finalist says enough. Uh, pictures, videos, absolutely do this vehicle no justice. When you look uh, at all the photography, that we took uh, for our website listing, again at msclassiccars.com, you will clearly see every time you look at a photo, it kind of speaks different volumes. So as an example, when you're looking at it from the front, it looks very elegant. You get kind of down in this position here, and what I see is I see that three inch chopped roof. I see those amazing modern slim style mirrors, kind of that gangster style uh, windshield, you got this amazing hood scoop. It kind of has that aggressive look. So not every vehicle has an elegant look and an aggressive look in one vehicle, but I would clearly say this 33 Vicky absolutely does that. The other thing about this particular hot rod here is some hot rods are all talk, no business. This is all talk in all business. This is pushing 620 horsepower. So all of its great looks are backed up by an absolutely killer powertrain. So let's get up a little bit closer here. Uh, the first thing I'd like to do is just kind of go over this vehicle here. I'm looking for any imperfections whatsoever. Uh, it is absolutely magnificent. I'm gonna grab my rag here. So as we're making our way around, if I see a dust particle, I might wipe it off or what have you. Uh, but the first thing I'd like to say is this hood uh, that's on this vehicle, countless hours went into making this hood. When we make our way back to the front of the vehicle, I'm gonna open it up and I am gonna take off the engine side covers so you can see all of that. But I just can't comment enough on how magnificent of a job they did with this hood. Again, it's all metal and they fabricated this beautiful hood scoop in the front here. You'll notice this chrome mesh that actually mesh, uh, matches the mesh on the front grille. They made all of this fit perfectly. Again, thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars went into this uh, to create this amazing piece of artwork. These headlights right here, these are actually off of a Harley Davidson those are newer style modern headlights. And again, although this vehicle was built in, and finished in 2010, if you looked at it today, it looks like something that would be finished today. That's the whole idea behind uh, their selection with the grade eight Riddler is judging cars that actually look 
futuristic, uh, which they accomplished with this vehicle back in 2010. Somebody would absolutely believe that this was just finished today. And again, because it was extremely well taken care of, it looks like it was a fresh restoration here. So uh, again, looking at all these lines, when you start to study the gaps, it is spectacular on the hood, the front grille, even down here where everything kind of lines up, these swooping front fenders are spectacular. The way the headlights are all placed, I really can't say enough about it. We'll make our way over to this uh, fender here, again, that covers this beautiful wheel. Uh, these wheels are actually from Billet Specialties. Uh, these are an absolutely gorgeous wheel. This is actually a 17 inch wheel in the front. Um, wheels are wrapped with these Toyo proxy tires. As they indicate here, they're 225, 45, 17s. You will notice the huge uh, disc brakes behind the tire. Uh, these disc brakes do have a little uh, corrosion on them. That's simply because it just needs to be driven. Uh, we did put some miles on it in the service department. So if you're seeing that, that's not a big deal. You'll see these beautiful polished uh, calipers here. Again, magnificent wheels and brakes. They got these nice, beautiful billet, uh, bullet style center caps. As we make our way uh, up to the engine side cover, you will notice all of these air vents here. And they did a really nice job matching the front grille with this chrome mesh. And then they use this nice chrome strip here to kind of finish it off in that forward motion. Uh, as the body kind of looks like it's moving forward, that kind of uh, goes with the flow, so to speak. Again, I don't see any imperfections to speak of uh, on the hood, on the side covers, or even on this real roof area here. The glass is brand spanking new. Um, there is a tiny, tiny little thing here. Again, if you see some of this in the video, it's dust, but there's a little spot there one of the only imperfections really on the whole car to probably make note of, not a big deal. It's been touched up, it's barely visible. As we make our way over to the passenger door, uh, one of, I'm sorry, driver door, one of my favorite things about this vehicle is the mirrors, as I mentioned earlier. I think these are a perfect, perfect choice. Mirrors can really make or break a vehicle. I just think these look really, really nice. Uh, when you go to open these suicide doors, you just push down the lever like I did and it leads you into this beautiful cabin. A lot of times when you get into something that's got a fiberglass body with some metal uh, parts and so forth, the doors are very uh, weak or tinny, whatever you want to refer to them as. Check out how beautifully these close, like solid. You would never know that these doors were not metal, and when you open them, they open beautifully. Uh, everything was done to the highest level. Um, you can see, these knobs here are billet. You can see that this material is all suede. Absolutely gorgeous. You don't see the windows in here because the felt covers them perfectly. It's another thing when you look at a lot of hot rods, the finish work is just not there. Look at how all of this was handmade and fabricated, wrapped in leather. It brings in some of the chrome here. You've got more leather down here. Doors, locks are here. Uh, it's just absolutely stunning. Now, as I make my way into the interior quick, um, I'm just gonna point out some of the highlights. I am uh, six foot, 200 pounds. Uh, you can see how comfortably I sit in here. I have a lot of headroom, even though the camera might be showing some of my, my forehead, not my whole head. I do have a lot of headroom in here. Um, this whole entire headliner is all suede. They made these beautiful flowing, uh, pieces here that kind of give you that concave look and up in the top here uh, This is an area where you actually have your door releases I thought that was beautifully done everything again flows in this car as I mentioned earlier uh, in the video This dashboard was all made by hand. You'll notice these custom uh, vents here It's all been wrapped in leather the center section the fascia of the dash is actually suede uh, these gauges here, uh, these are made by Classic Industries, uh, which is a Classic Instruments rather, which is a big name in the business. They're kind of like a silver uh, gauge. I think from my recollection, 
Just this gauge cluster was like $2,600, amazing. This is an I did it tilt column. So if somebody's a little bit taller, a little bit shorter, it's nice when you wanna get in and get out of the vehicle. Um, again, it's got all of the high-end components like billet stocks and things like that. The pedals are even custom. Uh, again, I believe this steering wheel is a billet specialty steering wheel. It does say Sly on the horn button. Um, again, it's got a really nice um, uh, head unit here, sound system and so forth. You'll notice uh, these lights, these normally would be in the headliner, referred to as dome lights, but what they did is they concealed them in this center console. This center console has been wrapped in leather and it's really nice because it flows all the way into the back seats, which I wanna touch base on in a minute. Uh, I think what I'll do is when we get to the passenger side, I'm gonna show you a little bit about the back seats. But anyway, uh, up here we got the controls for the vintage air conditioning system. We have a shift indicator uh, light here on the console. We have a low car shifter. We have our two power window buttons. Again, this vehicle has power windows. And we also have a little surprise in the back I'm gonna show you in a minute. Um, but again, what I like about this, it's super, super nice, it's spacious. It's not overdone, but it has all the amenities that you could ask for in an interior of a hot rod. So again, a lot of times hot rods are not very user friendly. I would say this particular one has been laid out very nicely to make it as friendly as possible. So let's continue uh, to make our way around. Shut this door again. Again, you'll hear how nicely that shuts. Pay attention to these gap lines. Look at how absolutely beautiful all of these gap lines are, this piece that wraps around here, all of this, I mean, it's just absolutely stunning. Again, all this glass is brand new, it's tinted. Again, in this video, if you see any spots in this vehicle, if I'm not mentioning anything, there's clearly nothing to talk about, it's just dust particles that comes from our ventilation system and so forth. Uh, when we get down to the running boards, this is another feature that I love. You'll see how they integrated the side exhaust system out the running boards uh, just enough where you can see the chrome and then of course the chrome mesh that matches the side engine covers, the front grille, the hood scoop, etc. Again, tying in the attention to detail. It's absolutely spectacular. Again, the wheels that are in the back. Again, these are billet specialty wheels. They kind of look like a blade. Again, that forward motion theme that the whole car is kind of been built around. Again, Toyo proxy tires. These particular tires here are 255, 45, 18s. So they're kind of a staggered wheel. You'll notice in the front when I was reviewing the 13 inch uh, rotors and uh, the polished calipers, um, I mentioned that. You'll notice on this one, you would think immediately it does not have disc brakes in the back, but that is not the case. This has got a complete heights rear end system. Um, you'll have to Google it on their website to get the name of it. My service manager today, uh, Michael Marcella, gave you the name of it. I think it was called the Super, the Super Way or something like that, but it's an extremely expensive deal. You gotta check out our undercarriage photos to understand it, but it's got four shocks. It's just amazing, the whole entire system. It's got the Ford nine inch rear, et cetera, et cetera. But anyway, as you make your way to the back here, again, you'll notice the attention to detail here, second to none, this beautiful all new glass window, how beautifully everything was done, the, the brake light and so forth up top here. Again, remember when this was built, they were so far ahead of its time. This is actually a fuel filler. This is where the fuel goes. Again, this vehicle runs on pump gas. I recommend higher octane pump gas, like 93 would be fine. Um, that's a really nice addition. Down here, you got your tail lights, brake lights. Uh, these are LED, absolutely beautiful. This body is laser, laser straight. The paint is absolutely spectacular. And once again, I see no imperfections to talk about. Before we make our way over to the passenger uh, rear fender and so forth, I told you I had a surprise for you. So I wanna show you something that's really cool. Um, again, this is your license plate frame here. This is actually lighted. When your lights are on, you'll see that heights uh, rear system that I just mentioned earlier and all that polished work, everything has been done to the highest level. But check this out. I'm gonna go ahead and show you. So 
So what that is, that is a vanishing license plate. That's when you want to get away from the police and you don't want them to get your light. No, I'm only kidding. That's just for strictly car shows. It gets rid of that ugly license plate and it actually tucks underneath so people can get a better view of all the money that was spent on the undercarriage of this vehicle. So as we make our way over uh, again to the passenger side, this is absolutely as good as it gets, everybody. I mean, this is laser straight. The paint is ocean deep. There's no imperfections to talk about. Again, stunning, beautiful body lines, new glass, amazing gaps. Again, we have the billet specialties, 18 inch wheels. No need to talk about them anymore. Uh, this door here again is absolutely stunning. There's your side exhaust tips like we had on the driver's side. I did mention to you that I was going to show you uh, something with the passenger side. Again, you will see the attention to detail. When you, when you get into cars that are uh, grade eight contenders or finalists or cars that even won the Riddler Award, it's attention to detail that they're judging. So as an example, when you're looking at this upholstery work and you don't see it coming apart in sections, you see the fit and finish. As I mentioned on the driver's side, you don't see inside the window channel. That's the kind of stuff that they pay attention to. Notice when I open these doors, they're not creaking and making noises. They open beautifully, they shut beautifully. Look at the carpet. Again, they want to build vehicles that look like they were built at the factory. So when you're sitting in the passenger side, uh, again, I'm six foot, 200 pounds. And I sit in here, look at the amount of room that I have in this vehicle. I have a lot of space, again, headroom, width, and there are back seats. These back seats are accessible through the passenger side just by lifting up on this lever here, which I have to access from this side. Bear with me one second here. So this seat lifts up like so, and it allows you to make your way into the back seats. Those back seats are very, very spacious. They are absolutely beautiful. You'll see that waterfall style console with the lights that they added for the rear passengers as well as the front passengers. You clearly see that all the lights are working. By the way, everything in this vehicle works. The air conditioning, the power windows, uh, all the gauges. It's what we do at MS Classic Cars. Again, we service this vehicle so everything is in working order, but this is a four passenger vehicle with four bucket seats. Absolutely awesome. As we make our way uh, to back to the front of the vehicle here, Again, everything is in spectacular condition. There's nothing anywhere that's worth mentioning. It's in near flawless condition. Uh, again, these beautiful vents that match the front grille, the chrome strip like we had on the driver's side, and of course these 17 inch wheels. The wheels have no rash. They have no real imperfections to speak of. Just absolutely stunning. So what we're gonna do, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put on my gloves uh, so we don't get handprints over everything. I am gonna lift open the hood and I'm gonna demonstrate how simply the side engine covers come off and then we'll go over some of the engine compartment features and then we'll finish talking about some of the undercarriage items as well. So let's get into that. Okay, so as you can see, I've got my gloves on and again, that's to uh, demonstrate how to take off one of the side covers. Uh, with hot rods, things sometimes can be very complicated, and I just wanted to show you how user-friendly this vehicle was. So again, I'm going to go ahead, go inside, and I'm going to release the hood. A lot of times on these uh, hot rods, the hoods open side to side, and what happens when they open side to side is they get real flimsy, they blow over in the wind, the, the engine covers sometimes move side to side, it causes damage, et cetera. Believe me, we've owned them in the past. What I love about this particular hot rod is how they designed the hood. Again, they spent a lot of time, a lot of money on it. So what you do is you just release it from inside the vehicle, as simple as it gets. I'm gonna go ahead and shut the door here. Over to the front. Just lift it up with both fingers on either side, and you will see how beautifully this opens. 
When you open and close this hood, it truly feels like you're opening a hood on a brand new car. They did a fantastic job. I would tell you it's one of my favorite things about this vehicle is how beautifully the hood opens and closes. Look at the, look at the attention to detail. Uh, the, all of that, I'm referring to the firewall that's all smoothed and those hinges were all custom made. Look at how nicely this moves up and down. It's just spectacular. Again, fit and finish is second to none. Let's talk uh, for a second about this engine and then what I'll do is I'll take off this cover here on the passenger side. We'll move the camera over to the side of the engine so you can see that as well. Uh, but I think they came up with a great choice. A lot of times with these hot rods, um, a lot of times people will skimp on the powered train. Uh, they, they typically will use a small block, whether it be a Ford small block or a Chevrolet, you know, something that might have two, three, 400 horsepower at best. What they did when they built this is they said, we wanna figure out a way to have a big block motor and we wanna go with something that wasn't built in somebody's garage. We wanted to order it from a manufacturer like General Motors. They went on GM Performance, looked at this 572 crate motor. It's one of the most bad to the bone motors money can buy. Uh, this motor today, probably 20 grand when you're said and done with some of the components that it comes with. And again, it's been dyno tested. It came with a warranty, 620 horsepower. Not only did they buy the engine in a crate and then configure everything inside the car uh, on the chassis and everything else, but they went ahead and they actually added a complete custom fuel injection system uh, at the time, it was the best that money can buy. I think my notes will reference somewhere around $10,000 was spent on, I'm talking about the intake, the fuel rails, uh, the whole entire system all together. It was a very, very expensive endeavor. Of course, you'll see the word sly on this custom air cleaner here, but look at the attention to detail. We have the mesh that's similar to the mesh on the grill and everything else I mentioned when I did my walk around presentation. You'll notice the carbon fiber here that matches the carbon fiber valve covers. They added the word 572 because this engine came with orange valve covers that said 572, so they kept that theme going. Uh, look at even what they did with this front runner pulley system. This is big, big dollars. Look at how they put the carbon fiber in here to match everything. All of these beautiful lines, all these special AN fittings, uh, the compressor for the air conditioning, everything just looks like it was built like this in the factory. I'm a huge fan of these heat shrinked uh, hoses and so forth. They just did an absolutely uh, spectacular job with this engine. The engine is actually cooled by a very expensive polished radiator here that's got a oversized electric fan. Uh, you'll see this overspill canister here is all billet. Again, everything was done to the highest level. Uh, can't say enough about it. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and take this side cover off. Now normally there are three screws here. Um, we just are using one screw because we knew we were taking it off. It's an Allen head here, very simple. I'm gonna go ahead and put that over here. I'm gonna go ahead and put down this rag. So when I take it off, I'm just gonna lay it on the table. So first thing you do is you just kind of move it to the side here, just so you don't do any damage. Nice and easy. And then you just kind of lift it up, just like so. How long did that take me? 10 seconds, put it right down. Now you can see why I'm wearing these gloves, just to keep the fingerprints off. But look at what we have here. We can do this on both sides. If somebody chooses to drive the vehicle with the engine side covers off, they can do so. Uh, it looks absolutely radical when the hood is down and you see that amazing motor in there. But look at this attention to detail. Look at how beautiful these spark plug wires are outfitted in this amazing billet wire separator. Look at how they plumbed all the wiring into the firewall. You got your transmission dipstick over here. It's all billet, billet breathers. Look at how they did the distributor. I mean, it's just stunning. Looking at this is stunning. Look at, look at this 
particular hose here and how it's all fabricated. You got your VIN tag down there on the chassis. Now, as we talk about the undercarriage, uh, the undercarriage of this, the quality just continues to get better. I would probably say the highlight of this vehicle besides everything that I've went over is the undercarriage. The undercarriage is spectacular. I'm gonna go on record and say it's gotta be in the top five in MS Classic Cars history of how detailed the engine uh, compartment and undercarriage is. Uh, so the first thing I wanna mention is the underside of the body was completely finished. Uh, and I'm saying finished like the top side. It was all smoothed out, it was completely done, and then it was all primed, it was painted, it was wet sanded, it was buffed. Then what they did is they actually took heat shield and they placed it in certain areas to keep the floors from getting hot. Again, attention detail. The body was then obviously placed on a downs chassis. So you hear sometimes people mention uh, chassis, like we have a car over there as an example that has a Roadster Shop chassis. We've had cars with Art Morrison chassis. This has got a downs chassis. So it's a, it's a custom chassis that the body sits on, uh, which gives the vehicle a great ride. Uh, it's great for performance and things like that. And then of course, we have our entire steering system, which is all rack and pinion. We have our independent front suspension system. Uh, we've got Again, that heights uh, system in the back, which is absolutely spectacular. The engine breathes through ceramic coated headers. Uh, Michael Marcella, my service manager, when we were talking about the exhaust today, he said, Mark, somebody spent huge, huge money on the exhaust system because those headers tie into a not only mandrel bent, uh, fully custom three inch exhaust that exits the side of the vehicle, which again, all had to be fabricated, but not only did they do all that, they ceramic coated the entire exhaust system and polished it. If I were to guess, uh, I don't have receipts for some of the things that were done, but if I were to guess, that's gotta be four or $5,000 for the exhaust in this car. And then of course, to get them to match perfectly on both sides, have that chrome, have the chrome mesh, it's just crazy. The engine is coupled uh, to a 700 R4 transmission, that's a three speed with the four uh, speed being overdrive. It's a great transmission, it can handle the power of this motor. Again, 620 horsepower. It's got an aluminum drive shaft. It, again, inboard brakes in the back. You just gotta look at the attention to detail, even the fuel tank in the back was all fabricated, it was all done to perfection, it was painted. This is a vehicle you could spend hours uh, underneath it looking at the attention to detail. You'll even see that they added a transmission cooler to the transmission to keep the transmission cool. Uh, it's that kind of stuff that they did. So again, you got fuel injection, you got a big block, you got huge horsepower, you got uh, an automatic overdrive transmission, an amazing rear end, you got four wheel disc brakes. It even has a CPP uh, portioning valve. It has a Willwood uh, master cylinder. It even has the, the, even the brakes are power brakes. So again, go down your list of all the things that you would want in a hot rod and this vehicle has everything that you could possibly ask for. Again, please visit our website at msclassiccars.com. Check out all the photos that we've done. From You gotta check out the attention to detail throughout. If you have or have not signed up for our VIP email blast, please do that. That's the best way to follow MS Classic Cars. We also ask that you follow us on social media as well. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna get inside the vehicle. I'm gonna go ahead and put this back on, shut the hood. I'll meet you inside. I'm gonna start it, let you listen to how beautiful it runs and then we'll end this video here. If you have any questions, call me directly. It's 508-557-0152, or you can email me at maja65stang at aol.com. Again, thank you for watching. It's time to rock and roll. So now I'm sitting inside uh, the 33 Vicky here. We're gonna go ahead and do a cold start. Let you listen how beautiful it runs. Uh, check this out, ready? Fires right up, idles beautifully. Rock and roll, baby.